In this video, I'm going to walk through how to finish a 3D printed part to look like a finished production part. This is a simple process that, depending on the size of your part and its complexity, you should be able to accomplish in an afternoon. This process is relatively the same regardless of what material or what machine your part was printed on. I'll start off with the original part here. Directly off the printer, this bike frame steering tube prototype was printed on a Stratasys Fortis 250 printer at 10 thousandths layer resolution, or 0.25 millimeter. The part was just removed from the tray and still has support material on it. To reduce support material removal time, I'm going to remove most of the support by hand. In just a minute or two, I remove the majority of the support material by using simple hand tools and pliers. The majority has been removed, but there's still some support material inside the model that will need to be dissolved out. So I'm going to toss this part in the bath to get rid of the rest of the support. Okay, the part has just been removed from the washing station. It looks good, all the support is gone. The surface of the part can be seen. You can see the layer lines are still easily visible. The striations can be felt when handling the part. Now we'll begin the finishing process. I'll outline here the four steps we'll go through to finish this part. Right here is a diagram showing the theoretical cross-section of the unfinished part, shown in magenta. The ridges from the layers can be seen here on the right. The first step will be sanding the part. This will break down the peaks of the striations and smoothen the part surface. Increasing grades of sandpaper will be used depending on how smooth you want the finished part. In the next step, the part will be coated with primer. The primer is shown here in light blue. Primer will help fill in the striations and provide a sticky surface for the top coat of paint to adhere to. Lastly, the part will be painted and clear coated to produce a glossy surface. Here I start the sanding. I begin with a fairly rough 150 grit sandpaper. After all the major bumps were sanded out, I moved to a 320 grit sandpaper. After sanding, rinse the part to remove any dust from the sanding and allow it to fully dry. Next, I prepared the part for paint. I wanted to keep the internal holes of the part free of paint. I used painter's tape and a hobby knife to tape the insides and trim it all flush. I brought the part outside for ventilation. Here I'm going to use an automotive high fill primer. I sprayed two coats for good coverage, allowing about 10 minutes in between coats. After priming, if you notice any imperfections, now is probably the time to fix it. Sand lightly with uh, an 800 grit, wash it and dry it again. If too much primer was removed here, you may want to go back and recoat with primer before moving on to painting. Once dried, I applied color in three or four light coats. To seal in the color and enhance the shiny finish, I applied two coats of crystal clear gloss. And that's it. In the span of an afternoon, I was able to transform this part into a beautiful, presentation ready model. And most of that time was spent waiting for the paint to dry. Using these steps, you can create models, prototypes, even end-use products that are as stunning as they are functional.